This O Steve comes to us from Taekwon Adams. And for the record, uh, Frank Williams, you know you're still our, our main infield O Steve reporter. Uh, got nothing but love for you, but yo, Taekwon, he he's he's joined the the news team. Cause this be he got it. He understands. All right. Uh <clears throat> he rocks in the treetops all day long, hopping and bopping and singing his song. All the little birdies on Jay Bird Street love to hear him go, oh, Steve, Steve, Steve. Spears and Steinberg. You know what the f it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut, cold. No political corrections. Always sleep. Being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this. Before you was on your mama. Mary Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Much love to my loyal bag holders. Rollers. Loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Can he not stick the landing? Yeah, he got it. If That's this was an NBA slam dunk contest, yo, I'd give him a 10. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, give him 10. For him that. and Frank know what the f*** they doing. Yeah. Frank, baby, don't get discouraged, man. Competition. You know what I mean? Steel, sharp, and steel. Come on, man. Taekwondo is in your ass, baby. Frank, show <laughs> us what you can do. Fight for your job. Uh, it's like that scene in um, Batman when Joker breaks the book, the pool sticks and goes fight for your job <laughs> he didn't say fight for your job i forget what yeah, he said no, no, you I know know what you're talking, yeah. yeah yeah my father was a drinker well that's kind of smile on that face it's not bad um let's see um I actually kind of wrote down the names of which ones to do because there were a couple I read, and I wanted to... Get those in? Yeah. Uh, oh, I first got to do... Come on, where is she? Uh, I said I got to read hers first, because it's been a minute. Miss Deidre Ann Johnson. The power of film. Guys, I feel like I'm being ignored. I will not be ignored, Dan. <laughs> That's perfect. I love it. That's perfect. Kidding. Uh, the person I missed in a movie was Jared Leto's character in Dallas... Buyers Club. I was surprised that I felt that way. Love the movie episodes. Deidre. I didn't see Dallas Buyers Club. That's the one where uh, Matthew McConaughey lost all that weight, right? Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. And so Jared Leto was in it, and there was a death, and yeah, yeah. it was it, emotional. Yeah, it's 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 a very heavy movie to watch, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Yes, that scenes, uh, those scenes are very hard. Mm -hmm. But Matthew McConaughey losing that weight like he did, yeah. to look like he did, the commitment that he had to it, mm -hmm. it really makes you feel the film even differently because you know what, like Matthew McConaughey is a good looking dude. I mean, mm -hmm. his face and his body, he was in great shape. Yeah. And then when you w look at him and he's so withered because he lost all that weight, you emotionally connect with the idea of these people becoming, you know, with, with their, they're shriveling up and dying. And so it, it, it was powerful. And then uh, Jared Leto's part was unbelievable. So, yeah, it, it, it was good. And I understand what you're saying. You know, I didn't think of it at the time, but now that we brought it back up, I'm thinking of it. Did the loss of Tom Hanks in Philadelphia do anything for you? It, 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 it made me, you know, it, the emotional part, but it, the movie was working in that direction. I really, I really like how they did it where he past before the outcome right so that you realize that that, that what I, I think what it, how it affected me is that once you have the, once you have that disease especially especially then we could well once you, but once you have AIDS once it goes to AIDS when it's not HIV when you go to AIDS man the top, the clock is ticking you don't have any any you're, you're definitely on a different timeline and you may not accomplish everything that you set out to do but you do the most that you can that's really what he did. Um, and it showed it showed that it showed that, you know, you're going to put this effort in and you're doing it for I guess in this film it showed that you're doing it for the people that come after you. But it just it really gave you that feeling of the clock is ticking and you only have so much time. How would Magic Johnson describe his progression from the time he was announced till now? 
Stronger. A success. <laughs> Man, I've been HIV positive for over, how long has it been? 30 years yeah. now. It has been a success. He doesn't even show HIV positive anymore. No, he's 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 one. There are some people that conspiracy he, theorists that would say he never had it. No, he beat it. He beat. He, it's a virus. You can beat a virus, but the, the chances are, especially with the technology they had, they couldn't. But he was in great shape. He worked out. He he worked at it. He continued to be positive. Uh, I think he had it, and I think he won. Oh, I think he won. Shit. Dude, I hope I can, I hope when I, I'm going to try to pull this up real quick, and I hope when I do, it's just a short snippet. That, that's always online. Uh, let me see something. Charlemagne Magic Johnson. Oh, this has to be it because this is too short. Uh, okay. So hopefully if this is the clip, I, I, I think it is. Dude, this has to be one of the funniest moments I've ever seen on The Breakfast Club. Magic Johnson is being interviewed by Charlemagne the God. <laughs> Please. First cut the information, did you ever say to yourself, it was that nasty from Sacramento who did that? <laughs> Would <Were> you... <laughs> 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 you, you... You think like that, no yeah. question about it. First cut the information. Oh, that's hilarious. I like that he was honest about it, though. But, but it, it, what was funny about it was... It took Magic a, a second, second, and then he got in on... Yeah, what He didn't was. take it serious. Like, he took it serious. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, he laughed at himself. He laughed at himself, but, I mean, I think he's also laughing about the emotion, because I, I, well, you can't find something... You can't think get something like that and go, how did I get it? And then just start wheeling backwards. Right, trying to, right. And then when he said that nasty... Right. <laughs> you know, he, he, when, you, when you got the results, did you think to yourself, it was the nasty... In Sacramento, yeah. and Magic said, "What, what, what, what are you thinking?" <laughs> right, right. No, it was per. I mean, I liked that he was human and he was honest about it. And that, and that, I think. But see, that's what I think makes Ma set Magic apart. I don't think he ever felt defeated. I think a lot of people wouldn't, especially back then. Especially then. I, I think it's changing now because there are more medications. There's things to keep you from from teetering over into past HIV. Right. Uh, but I. But. Uh, just having that energy and being like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat it. Now, a lot of people still lost, but he... I, I know, but, but in it, to, we got to highlight the obvious. When you're magic and you got the money yeah. for the best of everything, yes. that helps to keep your spirits up. Yeah, but you also have the best of everything for the best doctors, for the best medication, which allows people, be, because you're spending that money, it's allowing you protocols and different right. ways to treat it. So he's he benefited everyone from doing this. Right. So I, I, I'm happy for, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a triumph for humanity. Uh, Prince Bamfo, uh, first time emailer. Oh, Steve, do your thing. My name is Prince, first time emailer, long time listener. Got some title names for you. Uh, the bead keep the beekeeper is the seed keeper. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, the Italian job is the the Italian hand job, or the Italian. Yeah, too easy, but cool. too easy. Yeah, it's not uh, bad. It's not, it's not. We've had worse. Right. Instead of fast and furious, it's ass and curious. That's, I like that. That's one. funny. That's a game like right there. Yes. Well, it don't have to be, but it could be because it's an ass and curious. Because you did the the, the the if you look on things, it says by curious or right. Like, yes. Okay, okay. So that's why I said that. Uh, enter the back end. I don't, I don't know what the original is. Enter the dragon. Is that yeah? That I would think right. Enter the back of the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Uh, terminate her. Two. Pumping day. Terminate her. I like Terminate Her. That's not bad. No. It's not great. Arnold, what do you think? Oh, I think this is fantastic. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I really want to... Joe Gadot is making me go... Because, when, again, whenever I would do Arnold, I would overdo it. It's a cartoon. <laughs> Which everybody does. But, again, like C. King locks in on the tone of Denzel. Joe Gadot locks in like when i say that word i'm just as in pocket as him but once i start talking i lose it 
But when you go, yeah, this is fantastic. That's Arnold. But if I keep talking, it goes away. I, I lose the note and I become the, car, the caricature. Because you, you're hitting the notes on, on the word, not on the, 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 the pattern. You don't kind of just a whole pattern down. Yeah, yeah. These cookies, that guy went to eat them, they're fantastic. But, that, no, but you do Barkley. When you do Barkley, you do it. You keep in. in but keep Barkley's easier to do. Arnold is just, you know, if I, if I were to say a sentence, give me a sentence. Like, just say something. I don't know what's wrong with you. Are you stupid? I don't know what's wrong with you. I, just thought, I, I, start, yeah. I start getting into that where Joe will say that. Like, dude, Arnold's in the room. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with you. Are you stupid? No, but I think, oh. I think your Denzel is, is stays in Denzel. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not as good as C. King, dude. Uh, I know, pumping, uh, pumping Day. I think there's something you could do better with Pumping Day. Yeah. Um, I, I think, Honor, that should be the line, though. In, uh, what? When, uh, like, after... Like, like in the scene, like in, in the porn where he does the money shot and it hits her. And then she goes, but that's all you got. And then he should be able to go, I'll be back. And then, you know, he comes back. and hits, Oh. And hits, yeah. He has to come back and do something else, though. Yeah, yeah, he has to come back and finish the job. Do you know what today is? No. It's pumping day. Is that it? I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah, see, you hear it? Yeah. It's the bag. I got to find it, man. Um, Jaden Faust, actors in certain roles. What's up, ANA? First time reaching out to you guys. Just wanted to add on to what you said about Cube. I completely agree, by the way. Some actors play themselves in movies. Think about The Rock. What movie has he been in that you haven't said, that's The Rock? There's nothing wrong with being placed in certain situations because of who you are. I don't see The Rock playing some defense attorney, do you? It just wouldn't look right. This big, bald, buff man in a suit bursting at the seams in court. Please. Hope this wasn't too long. Peace to you both, and congrats on the marriage, Andy. Peace from Jaden in Chicago. Thanks, man. I completely agree with him. Uh, the Rock did, um, I'm going to forget the name of the movie. What's the one where he's in the music business? He played, and he's gay. He's gay in this. What? Movie. He's in the music business, and he's. Gay. Is this the one with Vince Vaughn? Yeah. Oh, cool something. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's it's. But in a comedy, that's fine because it's a comedy, so you can stretch the boundaries of what's acceptable. In a drama, everything is to be taken serious. Right. And could you see him as a defense attorney? I, I don't know. No. The size, the, the, he's right for the exact thing he said. The big, b muscular, bulky. When have, when have you ever seen an attorney look like when, that? When he was in, um, what's, the, what's the other thing he did? Um, it was on Showtime. or Ballers. Yeah, there, he played a more serious character in that. But he also played like a sports agent, right? Yeah, he was. Yeah, so and a lot of a lot of athletes turn into agents. But he wore a suit, he did the whole but thing. But a lot of, he was an ex-athlete, athlete. that's the difference. So, yeah, I guess it is to his character, but he still played a believable... You like, see The Rock as a scientist? No, but you don't cast... You, sometimes people don't get cast for certain parts because they don't look like it. Exactly. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're bad actors. No, Nobody's casting Michael Cera as an action star. <laughs> he could be a hitman action star. In a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what happened to Michael Cera? Hey, man. Hollywood said, "You done?" Did it say done, or did he? Did he just I mean, he's go in, in some directions? things, but he—he—it's he, not like he was at, like that at the moment. He was like on at fire. super bad, yeah. But when super bad, Jonah Hill is still, mm, and Michael Sarah's parked on the side of the road waiting for a tow truck. Waiting for, it. yeah, yeah. Um, That's why everybody goes into directing and producing. Yeah, that career can last a lot longer. Uh, you got sometimes. Listen, man. Sometimes you have got to create your own. Um, Myron Jenkins, keep Andy's name out your mouth. Wow, this is in favor of you. Yeah. Uh, hey, A and A, it's your boy Wayful Guru. I had to write in af again after the porch monkey baboon butt loving Brian Dixon came at the pod sideways. Keep Andy's name out your mouth, Brian. <laughs> 
<laughs> first of it was Joe Biden who helped get the 1994 crime bill put into play, which insensitized, insensitized, what are you saying? Incentivized. That? Incentivized police to put anyone in jail for minor crimes in order to fill jails and prisons. Kamala was a prosecutor at Almeda, California at the time, who just used a new bill to incarcerate people of color who would have gotten minor sentences for possession like community service paying fines. <clears throat> that could just be racked up to her doing her job and making a name for herself, a name that people came to fear when they are in jail for a nickel bag and seeing who their prosecutor was. That person knew they weren't going home. Also, you can look at the job she's done within the past four years in office already. She was put in charge of finding a solution to our southern border problem. The entire time of the Biden-Harris administration, there has been more than 20 million illegals entering the country, not all Mexicans, people of all different races entering with no clear intent. Uh, that's incompetence at its finest, and now we want to let this lady have control over the most powerful nation in the world. The reason Biden and Harris aren't allowed to have interviews is because they are just the puppets for their positions. They are controlled by their cons uh, constituents who are the military industrial complex, which is why they aren't allowed to say anything unless it is pre-approved. That is why they have been antagonizing Russia. That is why they are sending empty seats to Iran, empty threats to Iran. They want to go to war so that Americans can lose their lives while illegal, illegal immigrants are around our daughters and wives. They have betrayed the American people on a scale that is cataclysmic. Uh, she has also recently posted on Twitter to renew the ban on assault weapons, leaving Americans defenseless if attacked by threats foreign and domestic. Uh, if it was, it was JFK who said it's a president's job to keep his nation from going to war. Uh, she also will impose the most strict censorship laws the USA has ever seen following suit with Canada and the UK. Uh, Trump has done the one thing less than 2% of men can ever do. He's changed from his wicked way. We will do tour. We will detour us from war. Uh, he will detour us from war for at least another four years. The reason he is giving the police immunity is so that we can attempt, uh, so that we can attempt was Argentina has done by locking up all their criminals. That's a $10 moment. Uh, this will also expose the corrupt police department that have been infiltrated and co-opted by the cartels. Every gangbanger, drug dealer, pimp will be behind bars regardless of proof of their crimes. They will be victimized just like those whom they victimized. The police will now have authority to go after the cartels with full SWAT force that hide in our society and behind our laws. They need immunity because these cowards will hide behind their children and women. It's the, it's the scene from The Dark Knight when Harvey told the mayor of Gotham, imagine what you can do with four years of clean streets. And let's be honest, uh, that lady should have known better uh, than to threaten to th throw hot water on a cop. As blacks, we are raised and trained to know better than that. Some people just forgot that death by cop is a real suicide option. I'm not justifying what happened to her at all. I'm all, in all, I'm all honesty, in all honesty. That cop should have tased that dummy. Uh, but the police are not Batman or Superman. They don't save lives. They are instruments to be used by local powers to enforce laws or push agendas. All of my knowledge on the subject comes from pattern, pattern recognition as well as independent investigation done by Tucker Carlson, Russell Brand, and Ho Rogan. Uh, not the brainwashing media that Brian watches will, will he eats while he eats his wife's obese claim. I will send the episode links another uh, along in another email. Much love, Wayful Guru. Whew. That's a lot. A goddamn lot. Uh, anything? Yeah, there's a lot in there. You know, um, there's nuance to all these conversations. And as much as I want to agree with him because, you know, he's defending me and I appreciate that. Um, and, and, and honestly, I side with you on most everything. I don't think Trump's gotten any better. Uh, I don't think the... I, I think, I think Trump is who he is. I think, I, I think he's better about not letting the media push him down uh, a, a certain path, a hole that he's going to. But he's still f***ed up a lot of shit, the way he says things. Um, but you know, Harris with her, the crime bill that we talked about, she did, she did try to rectify some of it a little bit 
She had a, se- a second start program that she had. But, you know, when it comes down to it and you, you, you're you asked by a reporter, um, you know, uh, you, you send all these people to to jail, you know, to, to prison for marijuana violations. And do you smoke, you know, have you smoked marijuana? And she laughs. You mean... Maybe it's an uncomfortable moment that you laugh, and when you do, and then that laugh, whatever it is, how you know it, it, it's disrespectful to people who lost uh, time in prison for something that she does, and she's prosecuting them. So you understand the frustration. There's other, and there's there's people that have been incarcerated that have come out and spoken against her. There's other people that say other things about her. But she, it was her job, as he said. I like that he's level, and he said, but that was her, you know, that was her job at the time, and she was making a name for herself, and that's what she did do. Um, but I, I appreciate the support. I just wish people. I, I like that you had other opinions too, like what you said at the end about the cop. Um, like he should be in jail. He killed her. That's an that's an assassination. So, uh, but she should be throwing water on the people. But then we go back to where we said about defunding the police. Now here's the problem. We we came up this this term defund the police. It's the worst term in the world. We don't want to defund the police. We want to reallocate funds to better the police department. Like teachers go to school, and if you're a teacher and you want to make more money. You take more classes to put yourself in a better position where you have more knowledge that you can teach at either different things or higher levels, and you get accredited higher so that you can make more money. Why don't we have that for the police? Why don't we have the police that uh, that have sp- that are, are in tune with special services, mental pro- mental issues, so that when cops go out, they have someone out there on their team. It's a two it's a two man team, and one of them is highly educated to do those things. I fear for my son's life. I'll be real honest with this. I fear for my son's life. I'm happy he doesn't drive because my son True doesn't drive. And True, when he does something wrong or when he's not comfortable, he looks squirrely as shit, man. He is, you know, he gets he feels bad. He knows that he messed up, and he gets nervous. And he, I, I, if he would drive, I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't want him to drive. I, I would feel like a cop would be very nervous about someone like him, and it could it could you know cost him his life. Because there should be more training involved in this. Real quick, if a cop were to pull over your son and your son were to tell him straight up, I have ADD, is that something he would do to... to, to uh, when my son had his uh, got uh, a permit so that he could learn how to drive, I had something written out for him. Um, and it said, this is my, this is my son, True. Uh, my son is uh, autistic makes very poor eye contact and has a lot of anxiety. Please understand this as you speak to him. That's what I had that for him. I said, if you get, if we ever, if anything ever happens, I want you to hand this with your driver's license and go, my dad asked me to give this to you. Don't say anything else to say, my dad asked me to give this to you. Um, I, 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 cops have to be wary too, because people are also smart. Okay. I so I'm, I have, I'm going to act like I'm something else so that I can get away with this. It, that's a problem. So yes, it makes me very nervous. Uh, but that's the thing he said at the end. That's so controversial right now. I, I mean, I hate to even touch that because uh, I, I felt was in the video that I saw that that was a murder. And I think that people felt that way. I think uh, the people, uh, the, obviously, the prosecution has felt that way. They brought him up on charges. So that one goes away. With the immigration that we talked about, when Camilla, when, uh, when Harris, I always get her name wrong, so I'm just going to say when, when Harris was was named uh, the, uh, there's the question whether she was border czar or not the media called her border, border czar they didn't try to correct that uh so that is essentially what she w- she was but if, if she was just there to observe and to try to come up with some ideas for the problem that's one thing but if that's the case why didn't you go to the border i like when he said you never been to the border because i never been to europe either so her point was i can make decisions about europe but uh I don't have to go there to do it. But you meet with people. You speak to the people there. She, so she's just calling people in Mets. Well, who's she calling? She never went down to see the problem, the actual problem that he brought up. These aren't uh, just Mexicans coming up from there. There's not just people from South America coming up from there. We have people coming up from all over the world. She didn't go down there. That's a problem. Right now, in all, all the prisoner releases from Venezuela that are in, that's happening right now in Colorado, where there's a group, there's gangs that have taken over whole complexes. We're seeing the effects of what's happened after the four years, three and a half years of this. This is a mess, man. And the part that bothers me the most about her 
is that they were talking about taking her off the ticket so that Biden could run because they knew that he was in trouble and they wanted to improve the ticket. So when he steps down, the improvement is to make her the president. I'm sorry. I know you're for her. I, I, dude, I, I can't go there. I can't go with Trump, though, either. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm really disappointed that we live in America. And I know there's intelligent people here. We have some of the best education. We, we have some of the worst education system, but we also have some of the best education system. When our, our universities are sought after. We have intelligent people. We have people that should be able to do uh, to do this job. Where are these people? And I think that we've been locked in this uh, race for so long with Trump and with Biden and with the, the good, the evil, however you want to look at this whole scenario that we laid out, that we were stuck in this. And so Trump is still here. Biden's gone. Someone's younger. That a little bit, uh, I think it's a little bit more savvy to the problems of the people than Trump might be because he's Trump is looking at it a different perspective than she is. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I'm just and, and one of the key issues right now is abortion. And Trump actually sounds like he's in the middle on this. And I and I loved it when he said 16 weeks isn't enough for the Florida thing. Is he going to vote for it? He might have to because of his position. But he, he says 16 weeks isn't enough. I would like a president that is in the middle on this. Listen, I, I, I think most people are in the middle. I think a woman should have rights over their body. They should be able to do what they need for their body. I also think that that's a, ba that's a baby. My name is Haklim Mohammed. I'm from Iraq. I also think men should have rights over women's bodies. <laughs> well, I don't even want to get into this because there's a lot going on with uh, Israel and Hamas right now that's happened today. And I'm, I'm feeling very uh, uh, I'm upset about it. And uh, I, I've tried not to make this podcast about anything that's personal with me uh, on that level. So I, I've kind of eliminated. But, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a nice point. I like that you put, made that point. You made a joke, but it's a true point. The same people that are yelling that women and rights and their body and, and are, are supporting a group that has they don't want women to have any rights. So what the? It was a brother. Uh, I don't know if you heard this story uh, similar to what you said. There was a brother, I think, out of uh, Michigan named Leroy Jenkins. Uh, he was he was autistic and a cop pulled him over and he said, my dad wanted me to give this to you. And the cop pulled out his gun and said, my commander in chief wanted me to give this to you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I honestly, that is one of my greatest fears for true. Like he's right now, he's, he's in a, a, at this like comic, but it's, it's more of an anime convention. It's in Phoenix and he's downtown. And, you know, I just, and, and they're a little, he has his little group with him and they're all from the school that he went to. And they're all kids that are on the spectrum and, 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 and they're not goofy, but they're not socially aware, you know? Right. I, my, my son, it was so cute. We walked into a, a, a gym at the, at the hotel that he's staying at. And he goes, I want to work out with you. And I said, okay, I'll come work out. And so we got up early in the morning to go work out. And he saw a girl there yet the day before. And uh, he walks, and my son walks a little bit uh, like a duck walk where his feet, you know, go that way. And he walks real fast. And so he's walking real fast. And he sees that girl that he saw from the day before. He goes, hello. And then he just kept <laughs> like walking really fast mm. in a way. And it was, it was cute, but he's just, he's just awkward. And so these kids sometimes go out and they're a little awkward. They're a little goofy. Uh, you said your son got a big piece, right? He has a, he has a piece. Well, tell him to walk with his piece He's out. out. <laughs> That's why he walks with his feet out. They're pointing opposite directions. Yeah, but dang, he has to balance the weight. That, that'll throw off all the awkwardness, and the, the girl look, won't look at his feet or the speed. She's going to look at that meat and then go, I'm going to fuck the f this autistic. <laughs> That's a t-shirt we should make. Right. I'm about to fuck this autistic <laughs> nigga. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. And then I'll have a shirt on that says, I'm the autistic nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this he no, but I do worry about it, and especially when they're in that little group. And, and like I said, they're they're not, they're not so, socially. They're a little inept, man. That's not where they're that they're, they're they're socially connected to each other. But outside that, they, they they seem a little odd. And I and I worry about like if they did something wrong or something wrong happened around them, their reaction, and what people would perceive is what's going on. I so I, I do worry about it, man. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm I keep going back to that. Uh, this is from Centric. Uh, what up, Aries and Andy? Uh, reporting live from Oakland, California, or as Aries... Oh, shit! Or as Aries once described it, the place with all the dangerous... I described that like that? Yeah, well, you describe it as, as like it's a little... It's a little tough. 
Yeah, it's a little rough. I don't know. I don't recall using those words. Were you afraid of the white dudes who live in Detroit? Of the white dudes? The white dudes that live in Detroit. Oh, uh, no. So then you described it that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've been listening since episode one and haven't missed a show yet. Atta boy. Uh, Aries, I've been following you since Mad TV, and you are without a shadow of a doubt in my top five all time shit, maybe even top three. Uh, what is your top three if I'm in that top three? Who's, a, who's above me that should be below me? Uh, I know I'm mad late, but congrats, Andy, on the marriage. What a beautiful accomplishment. I wish you guys nothing but the best. I hope you guys realize how powerful of an impact your content has on your listeners. Laughter is healing. So I thank you both for providing that comedic medicine. Now for the main question. Have you guys seen Alien Romulus? And if so, what do you guys think? You know, that's probably something we should have done. Yeah. One, I didn't know it was out yet. And two, because there's a movie theater literally next to the hotel we're at. I've been wanting to see it. I just haven't. It's hard for me. It's, there's, can we be honest? Okay. There's been a lot of misses on these old movies lately. But this is a whole new... I know, but there's been so many misses that when I see right. aliens and I'm like, yeah, they're going right. to f*** right. up another thing from my, my right. childhood. So that I, I, I've been leery. Let me ask you this. Should Sigourney Weaver have been in this? I don't know. I haven't or seen it. Was it time to cut it loose? Cut her loose, like they did. Because she's no longer. She was, you know, the she, star she, of the franchise. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but she's so she's not in this at all. Even no, making a cameo. Not at all. No, no cameo. I, I don't no believe nothing. So. Nope. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, I personally thought it was just okay. Oh, he says it's okay. I did like how they linked it to the first Alien movie, which was pretty cool. However, the crazy ass looking half human hybrid alien at the end was just a little over the top for me. I'm a huge fan of the franchise, except for Alien Resurrection and the Alien vs. Predator spinoffs. Uh, Aliens, the second one, is by far my favorite, which is the, fir- which is the first time viewers were introduced to the Queen. Uh, here's my order ranked from uh, most favorite to least. He has Aliens, uh, the second one, as first. Alien, the first one, as second. Prometheus, at the prequel at third, Alien Romulus at fourth, Aliens 3 at fifth, and then Aliens Resurrection as the fourth one. How would you guys rank them? Oh, by the way, I'm a record producer who has worked with some dope artists, Cool G Rap, Buckshot, Freeway, etc. Aries, I think you especially would dig my music. Check out the hip-hop group Grand Opus on all streaming services and simply check out IamCentric.com. Peace out, Kings. I don't, I, I have yet to see Romulus um, I don't remember Prometheus. I don't think I saw that. Uh, so I saw one, two, five, and six, which is, I my order would be absolutely Aliens as one, Alien as two. Mm, I didn't really enjoy the one, Alien three, with the guys in the prison, and Charles Dutton is in that. But Aliens Resurrection one that didn't blow me away either. Eh, I'd say, yeah, I'd say two, one, three, and Resurrection. I'm in the same situation as you. I haven't seen all of them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I agree with one and two, his one and two. Yeah. And then, you know, let the chips fall where they may after that. Um, I, you know what? I think people do this is because our technology, we have so much more technology. Mm-hmm. They, look a mo- they look at Aliens and go, man, if we would have had that technology back then, mm-hmm. we would have killed it. Right. Well, they did kill it. Mm-hmm. So you're just redoing it with new technology, and it's not necessarily killing it. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. I know we we touched upon this, and uh, I certainly loved it when Patrice did it on Patrillo. Patri- on Patrillo, oh, no. Patrillo. <laughs> when Patrice did it on Opie and Anthony, uh, they, they li- literally did a breakdown about movies and sequels. And, I, you know, we, we said the same thing, where it's like, there are some sequels that aren't better than, than the original, and then there are some that absolutely are better than the original. Case in point, as, and you know, as, as this is going to sound blasphemous because people live and die by this franchise. I like Star Wars, but it didn't do for me what it did for everybody else. Now, Empire Strikes Back kicked a hole in Star Wars' ass. That's a sequel that Blew the first one away. Terminator 2, again, I like Terminator, but it didn't blow me away like that. T2 
with that technology, kick Terminator 1 in the ass. Like I'm saying here, aliens blew alien away. So, you know, there are some sequels that absolutely trump the original. We said it a couple of weeks ago. Beverly Hills Cop 2 blew the shit away out of Beverly Hills Cop 1. I like 1, though, too. No, I do, too. Yeah. And, and with the exception of Star Wars and Terminator, all the ones, you know, like Alien was good, but Aliens, oh, yeah, that was some other shit. Well, I, you know, in some of these stories like Aliens and Alien and Aliens, I don't think that they expected Alien to make that much, to be that big of a thing. So when they have the money and the budget now, right. they can get bigger. So I think that helped, that that's in their favor. T uh, Terminator to T two, mm. that was all, like they didn't have the technology one, and then they didn't you know wait they didn't have the technology in T two uh, no for Terminator oh for the, right yeah, yeah when they got because that was all done in stop motion and right uh, yeah and, yeah and, and the claim and you can see yeah. the lack of technology in yeah. some of them scenes and, but you know that's why when you go back and look at it you go no T two is so much better. When we saw it in the theater, though, and we hadn't seen anything like that, it was pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. But you're right. Uh, it, it, it flows better in T2, but they had the money, they had the budget, and they had a little bit better technology. And uh, They still didn't have the technology that we have today. Was Jurassic Park 2 better than 1? You know, I don't know because in Jurassic Park 1, even though the technology isn't up to, up to what standard is now, when you hear that music and you see, and, and she makes that stupid face, and then you see giant dinosaurs. They didn't just bring in like a dinosaur; they brought right. in the, you know the biggest dinosaurs, right? And so, Brachiosaurus. You know, and so you, you, and her mouth is dropped, which I thought was a little bit of overacting. That no, I don't at all. You, I think your I, mouth wouldn't be dropped if you saw an extinct animal from sixty million years ago. I, I don't know if it'd be that big. Like that. It would absolutely be that big. I think I'd be more like, uh, but that that moment when you see it, I, I think that that kind of, you can never get that kind of shock again or that kind of surprise when you see it like that. Right. But when they started walking, and you might have not noticed it when you first came out because it was you were so it was so big and so different from anything else that happened. But then when you see it, as they improve it as they go along, oh, that's the thing that separates it. When yeah. you when you listen when we saw it at that time yet you it was like holy shit. now when you look at jurassic park movies the most recent ones and you go back and watch the first one oh you see the difference in the leaps and bounds How in the it? technology but uh, uh jeff goldblum i mean that i don't know I, I liked him in a lot of other movies I, there's a movie he does with michelle pfeiffer i, for, I forgot the, the name fly of it. not the fly no. that's what gina davis and that was good though i like the fly too disgusting uh, there was a really good movie he did that was more like an action psych comedy with Michelle Pfeiffer, and I'm trying to remember the name of it, but that movie was so uh, good. I don't remember either. But I thought that movie really made him like bigger than... like he's, He was always going to be big after right. that movie, and he was really good as, right. a, you know, as a scientist, but like with the little edge to him. There was something cool about it. Right. If there was a... A, a camera shot, like just straight up close up of your crotch. And the the moment is you unzip your pants and pull your dick out in slow motion. What would be the movie soundtrack to that moment for you? Oh, hold on, hold on. I got it. Go, what, what, what's yours? And then I'll tell you, Mike. It'd you, be Jurassic you, Park. Jurassic Park. Bum, bum, like, picture my dick coming out slowly out of my pants. Bum, 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 bum. I think mine is Short People Got Nobody. Short People Got Nobody. How's that go? That's that uh, Short People Got Nobody. Everybody hates short people. It's is a, that Randy Newman? Yeah, that's Randy Newman. Short People <laughs> Got Nobody. <laughs> that is funny, though. Short people got nobody. You're just pulling your dick out. It's, it's very quick. Mm. You know what's another good one? Star Wars. Star Wars would be good. Dun, dun. Oh, I got a better one. What? I know which one mine is now. Dun, how does Star Wars go? I always, once I do Jurassic Park, it always throws me off. I got, I got mine now. Now I got mine for real. What is it? It's Jaws. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Ladies, what would be the soundtrack to as you come out of your bra? You know what I'm saying? I want to know that one. Deidre, Shamor, because I know y'all will play along. What's the what what be the theme song to y'all coming out of your bra? A B, you too. A B, that that probably be hers. Boom boom. <laughs> uh, what's a, what's a, what's a cute song though for for small though? They still make a grand appearance. So what what, what small titties? Small titties, like she just rips it open. They're nice. They're small, but they're nice. Like how small is small? Like CD case with nipples? No, like you know, like a, a nice B cup. Oh. You threw me on the spot, man. I know there's an appropriate song. There, there has to be, right? Yeah. I want, I want, I want the answer to that one too. Right. Okay. Because b- big one, you, we could come up with a lot of big and, ones. And when big ones come out, there's a blah, 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 there's a wobble before they settle down. Yeah. Little just. Yeah. So uh, I, yeah, I right. want, I want that answer too. Yeah. Damn. I, I, my, the comedian me in me is mad that you don't have. I, I don't have it, and I know there's something. Music covers a landscape of everything. I think you could use the. Uh, um, uh, what's the other Steven Spielberg? Is it Steven Spielberg? Bum, 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 no, bum, no. That's Indiana. No, it's it's, Indiana Jones. It's not Indiana Jones. I'm looking at. It's the, it's the Alien one before. Uh, that's not Steven. Spielberg. The one where they they communicated with lights and music. Oh, that, oh, I know you. Dirk and cl- encounters. Yeah, yeah close, 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 Yeah, yeah. He said, boop, boop. Probably. Boop, boop. But that's not really a soundtrack. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get back to some grown-up <laughs> conversation. Aiken Champ. Andy is a goofball. Andy, yeah. you're a literal character caricature of a Jew Mexican. You're only useful when you help when you help and work for others. Your goofy explanation of why white people aren't the full perpetrators of slavery is foolish and childish. Also, nobody said you own slaves, so chill the f*** out, you boy. All I got from your response is you've been holding this in for a while and you are just tired of black folks bringing up slavery. First of all, you're half Mexican. Quit claiming Jew like that reduces your taxes or something. Newsflash, white folks were animalistic in their form of slavery, the worst kind. Bringing up lesser facts doesn't change history. Slavery has always been a thing, but it did not start in Africa, nor was it a tradition. The wet, chicken-looking Mexi-Jew stay running his mouth with no one to check him. You about to have Wayful Guru tell you keep Andy name out your mouth. Aries, please bring on more guests when you can and let your boy get loose. Andy been getting on my nerves because he knows you're not going to really push back like ever. Remember, Andy, you're still that lame white boy staring at the cool black folks in school, at the mall, and in public. Remember that, Aries. Uh, Remember that. Aries let you on the podcast because he too slow and lazy to run it on his own. Nigga! I'm playing. Oh, okay. I'm playing, Aries. Don't go uh, off, but that boy need to be checked big time. Okay. We're, 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 don't get rid of it. Okay. We're, we're. B- b- bring it back up because I want to make sure that I get in everything on them. One, y- you answered your own stupid f- question there. Which one was that? It wasn't a question. You you made a statement that you're so f- uh, White folks didn't start slavery. It had been around before. You say it in there. You say it in there. Slavery has been around forever. But I think what he's trying to say is when he goes... White folks were animalistic in their form of slavery, the worst kind. Bringing up lesser facts doesn't change history, which I have to say, this is this is some of the arguments that I get in with, get 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 into with some white folks sometimes on Instagram because they love to deflect and go, well, black sold people into slavery, and, and it's like, okay, fine, but black people did not, in the, in, in, in his word, animalistically and heinously torture and rape and murder and castrate and separate black people from their from their families and uh, 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 
stripped him of identity. I know what you, I know, I, I, no, no, I, that, let me, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. Like, you know, when we got here, it was torture, nigga. My, my blacks weren't torturing each other. Dude, uh, the black slave trade and selling of blacks from blacks happened in wars, in tribal wars. So you, they weren't nice. Stop with the that they were nice. They were tribal wars. I didn't wars. say they were nice. So, but, but, so you don't think that there was killing, tortures, any beatings, any of the same thing that you're, you're saying? They captured them, they, they, they had them, and then they sold them off. My point is, white people like to deflect to get themselves off the hook. And, and, and going to that, has what, that, what the f*** does that have to do with, with the 400 years of shit that we had to endure? Well, under those animalistic, uh, 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 whatever the word is, you know, okay, but let's, let's conditions. See. No, but it's a not. It, uh, some people are deflecting. Some people don't want to take responsibility for what. That's is, all I'm what's saying. Here. But it's also important to understand the history of it. It didn't start with black. People. I get it. I get it. I understand that. It, 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 it didn't start that way. Some of the worst. And if we want to get to what the worst is or what's still happening today. And as you're saying that about black people, where is slavery at the, is the most common right now? I don't know. In Africa. By whom? Africans. Yeah, black Africans. So, so what do you? You're you're saying this to me like I, I like I'm deflecting. No, because you don't want to talk about history because you don't want to remember history because you don't want to understand history. It's happening right now. So that's part of what this is. I've never sat here and said that it's, we had. I think the most lame thing that you could say, and I went off on it, that there's good slavery, or better slavery. No, it's all bad. But when you learn about it, and when you go, and, I, and Aries said, and Aries brought up the Willie Lynch letters a long time ago about there. Where does that come from? It comes from Brazil. It doesn't come from the United States. It came up, and they wanted to, they, that's what, certain people came up, and they were, they were taught how to do this. I'm not for that. I'm saying you need to understand, and you should always know the history. Because once you understand the history and know how horrible people can be, we understand a lot more about ourselves and what direction we don't want to go back to. That's all. I, it's not deflecting for the sake of white people's feelings. And I am a Jew. So f*** you on that, too. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I hate that. I have to choose between what I am? Do, do, do you choose? Because you said you're black. I, I'm assuming that he's black in this. Is that correct? Was he? I, I, yeah, I think so. Okay. What black are you then? Choose. Because you're not just black. Are you an American? Uh, a black American? Are you American black? Or, or do you have some roots and some history that you would like to talk about? I'm sick of all this. The people come up with little <laughs> answers and think that they know something because they read something. Read the whole history. Understand what it is. The more you learn, the more you're going to stop yelling at other people about shit and start trying to figure out more shit on your own. This has nothing to do with me. All I do is ever talk about what the, it is in its totality. America f up. America didn't f up with slavery. I'll tell you where America f up. America f up when it became uh, the colonies and they fought the British and they had every right after they wrote that constitution to free all the slaves right then and there because all men were created equal and it says it right there and there's if you want to do some reading you can talk about the the the, the what do they call the forefathers of the country it's not forefathers it's, it's the, the four the four uh, there is writings about th th there was a dissension. There were people knew that that should have happened. And they didn't do it, and that's why America has a stain because that's what they should have done at that moment. The worst part is that's worse. Second worst part: we have a civil war because we want to eliminate this uh, from uh, from the Americans. People leave America to be to form their own country because they don't want to be the, they, they want to keep that they want to keep slavery. We have a war, brother versus brother. Sometimes on this, they kill each other. The winners of the war, slavery should have been eliminated, and then we we come up with a a, a, a slavery light that was just as bad. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we we have a stain. And there's no doubt about it. But if you don't understand it, if you don't talk about it, if you don't understand it, what it is, and when we talk about white people. The Europeans didn't see themselves as white. They fought each other for their different races. They saw themselves as different. So now we're making it because now we're more connected. Now we just want to put this group as this group and that group as that group. It doesn't work that way. Because history, you have to know the differences between people to understand the history. 
And then it can explain it and how we ha and where we are today. But if you don't understand the history, if you're not willing to even talk about it, how do you get there? And you, sir, are someone that's not willing to talk about it because you think it's deflecting. No, it's called intelligence. Read a book. You know, the, you know, this is why it's like it's dangerous when you talk about race, religion, or politics. Because, dude, there are like again, anytime I post something political, the way people come at me with such venom and every now and then i'll get somebody who goes hey man i don't necessarily agree with your politics but i'm not going to tell you to stick to comedy because everybody has a voice and everybody should be allowed to voice how they feel and i just respectfully want to tell you that whatever 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 but you see why can't we do that the, the natural inclination is to if you don't agree with my politics or, or, or my religion or my stance you you blah 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 Damn, man, we, we can't, you can't disagree with me and we still keep it civil. We still keep it respectful. We can't do that. We used to be able to do that. Now, if you don't agree with me, you can't be talked to anymore. Now, we can't uh, look deeper into things so that we can uh, have a conversation and come up. Conversation, we used to have conversations and debate. Debate wasn't to argue. It was to, it was to find solution. It was to recognize flaws in arguments so that you could find solutions to the problem you were discussing. We don't do that anymore. It's either this or that, and it doesn't work that way. Only with black sheep. This uh, engine, engine, number nine. We used to do that at parties in the basement. <laughs> when that part came on, everybody, did you? We'd all we, I believe low. in Arizona, we didn't have basements. Doom, 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 doom. And when that part came on, pick it up, pick it up. On it. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. Um, last one. The last one. Who was that? That was uh, Sean Connery. All right. I don't know what the joke is, but she's just going to run and find a joke for the last one. I think Sean Connery back in the day, because he was so, when he was James Bond in his prime, was so sexy to women. You just picture him, a, a bed full of women lined up like sardines, and he's tired because he's busted like eight nuts, and he finally goes, the last one. You know, all that Sean Connery, but my favorite movie of his is still The Untouchables. Really? Yeah, when he's he's pretty damn good in that. He is awesome right. in that movie. Yeah. When he when they send one of yours to the hospital, you, you send one of the ass to the morgue. <laughs> he pulls a knife, you pull a gun. That's the Chicago way. That's the Chicago way. Yeah. yeah. Now, what was your name before they changed it? Oh yeah, he was great in that. Andy Garcia was my man in that. Do a young Andy Garcia. <laughs> yeah. Better than you, you stuck Irish pig. <laughs> All right. Uh, ooh, I like this one. What? <laughs> That's what he goes. Ooh, I like. Oh this yeah, yeah. Bit. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> why you want to be the? What? Why? You, what makes you want to be an officer? Well, I want to uphold it. Uh, don't give me the yearbook answer. Just tell me. Now I'm dipping into some other language. I don't know. Yeah. All right, Ezra Vernardo, big fan since Mad TV. What's up, Aries and Andy? Love the podcast. You guys are always funny and entertaining. I just had a question for Aries. Every now and then, I go down a wormhole and watch all your interviews on other media platforms, even Punk Ass Vlad. And I came across one when you were on Big Boy's Neighborhood. I remember you had your daughter and her music group partner on there singing. I was wondering if your daughter is still in the music business, and if they are, did they change their group name? Because the name Type 2 just reminds me to take my metformin every day. <laughs> uh, no, nah, her, her, that, that, that group broke up, uh, and uh, she's trying to... Figure something else out while she continues to waste daddy's money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you're supposed to support your kids' dreams, even if it's, you know, killing you. Uh, so, yeah, she's trying to figure it out. Does she, does she want to stay in music, though? You know, I think she just wants to be famous more than... I mean, I know she has a she likes it, but... I think she's more attracted to the glitz and the glamour than the actual artistry of it. Does she want to act then? Nah, she's not really. You know? She done stand-up? No, hell no. <laughs> hell no, nigga. Her doing stand-up would be like Rain Pryor. No. 
I, and, and you know, every time I see rain, I just see Richard's jaw. You know? Yeah. But I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think there's something that you love, your, the, the love that you have for your dad and for what he did, and you, you're, you're trying. You're trying to do it. Yeah. And, and it's not that she's not funny. She's not Richard. Then she ain't funny. Who's, who is as funny as Richard? Who's as funny as anybody that is, is, is not an offspring of the original? I, I don't know. All I know is that no one's going to be... To me, the only one who comes close is Chappelle, and that's it. So, you talking about as funny as Richard? Yeah. No, but now you're talking about two greats. Okay. I'm talking about what offspring really takes the mantle and runs with it at the same level of the original. Who, oh, really? There's not many. Michael Douglas did it better than Kirk. But it, those are hard to come by. Yeah. You know, no one will say this, but Pauly Shore was probably funnier than his dad. Oh, uh, that's for sure, buddy. <laughs> the whistle. <laughs> How long was that supposed to last? Would not that, 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 there's, there's no way that maintains 20, 30 years. But see, the problem with it is once that happens, you can't move away from it until people say you're, they're done. Because it's really, let's be honest, that's, that's a one note. That's a character that, that's your own Frankenstein. Yeah. It's one note and it's so popular for the time it was, you're not going to outdo that. No, he built it on MTV and it turned into something else. And, but he is, I got a couple of movies from it, buddy. But he is, he was a funny guy. He just, and he grew up around every comic. I mean, he, he breathed, he ate, breathed, slept comedy. So uh, it's unfortunate that that is where he got pigeonholed. I think he would have been funnier if he didn't get stuck in that. My makeup comes from the semen of a lot of comedians. <laughs> <laughs> I got Richard on me. I got Robin Williams. I got David Letterman and Roseanne Buddy. Turn into Jamie Masada. Yeah, but you know what's funny is yeah. he's the only one in that family that made money on his own. All of them have made money off the comedy store and their mom. He's the only one. He didn't get. He doesn't have comedy store. But money. his benefit was being around the comedians so yeah. that he could do that. He did that and he did it. But the other ones make the money off the off the store, yeah. and that's kind of you know. I'm I'm not I'm I'm just saying that I just feel like he gets left out in this conversation that we had. He yeah. he did put his own dick on the table and did his thing for mtv wise and when he was popular for the movies yes does his stand-up ever stand out to you as no, legendary no but i think if he if he had the ability to continue to work on stand-up and not have to be the weasel the whistle i think he would have had you know had a different things but he had he leaned into what was you know, that's what people do. They lean into what works for them, and sometimes that's all the audience works. I, I see, uh, 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 what's his, what, what's, why, why can't I remember his name? Uh, Dice. Dice doesn't always want to do the nursery rhymes, and he doesn't want to do all the, the stuff that he's done but before. But to Dice's credit, Dice is funny. He is funny. For real. Yeah. But so all the, oh, I know that's part of the shtick, but he's really funny. No, but he has to go back and do that because people force you into that into that place they paid they paid their forty dollars for their seat or 130 dollars depending on what the venue is and they want a little bit of hickory dickory duck hickory dickory duck and she's oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think in his heyday though like if someone was and he just didn't care about him and he would just say that right while they're doing while they're right to say that to one just a like hickory dickory duck i can't believe you're my God. Hickory dickory duck. I can't believe, sweetie, you're <laughs> and then he ashes on the boy. <laughs> That's the name of this one. Hickory dickory <laughs> duck. <laughs> but you know, another thing too, though, about Dice, as raunchy and as brash as that was, complete gentleman. Complete gentleman, dude. I think it I, was a facade. It was it was it was an act. Yeah, but he he became a little bit. He bought into a little bit of his own act. Of course, because you you get away with that. Yeah, but I mean, when working with him, uh, I shouldn't say working with him. I got to spend a weekend with him, hosting for him. 
Uh, I was told by Eleanor Kerrigan that I was the only host that was allowed in the green room with him that whole weekend, the, oh, for really? the weekend. Uh, but he was the greatest guy, and I could ask him anything, to, and he gave me. Uh, I just, I, I really didn't fanboy out. I just <laughs> wanted to ask him, like, uh, because he said something about how you got to con- connect with the audience. You got to connect. And I think I've said this on here before, and I th- it was the greatest thing anybody said to me. I said, okay, Dice, you got to connect with the audience. And that's, we're in a comedy room, and you can connect. You can see people's faces. I go, but when you're doing fucking stadiums, how do you connect with someone that's in triple Z out in the f- middle they can't even see you? And he goes, I don't know. Don't ask me how to connect. Why don't you ask Elvis how he connected? Ask Led Zeppelin how they connected. And I and I understood it's it's you're a performer. You're past the comedian. When you start doing rooms like that, you got to be bigger than the stage that you're on. Mm. And you're you're a performer. And that's what he he was like. That's that's what you do. Ask the Rolling Stones how to connect. You got to be bigger than your. You got to be bigger. You just gotta you got to project that all out there. And I don't know. He was very interesting. I lo- I think the guy's very unique and. Another person who was pushed into something and was very misunderstood. Yeah. God, there's no way Dice could exist today. No. No, and it's a shame. Because he caught hell then. Yeah, well, and it was unfortunate because that's when his movie was coming out, yeah. uh, Ford Fairlane, which I own, and I think it's a funny-ass to movie. To this day, I've never seen that. Dude, I should bring it to you. It's so funny. Yeah. It's, it's funny, 80s funny. Uh, not no, no, no. He was '90s. No, I'm oh, sorry. '90s funny. Yeah. '90s. It was funny for that moment, right. those moments in time, because it, it, you know, it it does get dated the movie, but it was funny. It was, it was yeah. a funny movie, and if he if he didn't have that whole blow up that happened at the time, uh, I think he would have been able to work his way into becoming who he actually is all the time. Right. I, I, but I, 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 listen, I think the guy's funny, and I see him, I, I said this to you, I saw him in that leather jacket, and the leather jacket, he was bigger than the leather jacket when he was at his best. The leather jacket looks bigger than him now. Right. So it, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough place to live. Yeah. I mean, but that's his identity. I mean, that's who he looks, that's how people know Did, him. Do you ever see that, that clip when he was on Arsenio Hall, and this was after he caught so much flack, and he gets up and does kind of like this monologue, but he starts getting emotional and Terry, they kind of say that kind of ruined them too. Cause they saw who, they, he, yeah, bro- he broke the character. Yeah. And it was cheesy. I think he really felt it though. If he did that, I think he felt it. I don't think he was acting it. Yeah. I, I think that, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, when you're, when you, you're allowed to be a clown until, and you can even put on the sad face. Clowns can put on a sad face and you're loud as long as everybody doesn't believe it. Mm. But the second they believe that you actually have an emotional soul, that uh, now there's a problem. Don't show no weaknesses, man. Every time I want out, they pull me back in. All right. Where are we? That's it. That's it. Uh, by the way, just for uh, my dude who, the, who hit me about all my how I sit here unchecked, I want you to check out something, though. And I mean this truly if you have the time. Mm-hmm. Uh Look up all the Jews that are in mm-hmm. Mexico. There's a huge Jewish community in Mexico. You know what they are? They're Mexican Jews. Because you can be Mexican and Jewish. Read a book. I'm saying they put their in their own taco shells. Whatever it takes, man. I'm saying. Is that a show? Oh, I got dates. 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 I forgot dates. I was so, so worked up. So worked up. All right. These dates are the same as the last dates I gave you. But here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to be at Hartford. You're listening to no, we're no, we got we. You're listening to this, and uh, we're not even on the road. Uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, we're going to be at the Funny Bone, September 13th to the 14th. September 20th to the 21st, we're going to be at the Improv in Kansas City. Uh, September 26th to the 29th, we're going to be at Tommy T's in Pleasanton, California. October 4th, we're going to be at Royal Oak Music Theater in Michigan. October 5th, at the Apollo Theater in NYC. October 11th through the 13th, we're at the Improv in Orlando, Florida. October 17th, we're at the Vancouver Playhouse in Canada. October 18th through the 20th, we're at Spokane Comedy Club in Washington. October 25th through the 27th, we're at the Tampa Improv. October 23rd through November 1st, we're at the Chicago Improv. On November 8th, we're at Hawaii Theater in Honolulu. November 15th to the 17th, West Nyack Levity Live, obviously in West Nyack, New York. And I don't know why I did that. And uh, 
November 21st to the 24th, we're at the Improv in Ontario, California. November 29th, we're at the Trust uh, Texas Trust CU Theater. Obviously, they're in Texas. Uh, I think it's by Grand Prairie is what it says there. Uh, December 13th to the 15th, we're at Raleigh Improv in uh, Cary, uh, even though it says Raleigh, but it's in Cary. December 19th to the 22nd, we're at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. December 27th, we're at Pikes Peak Center for the Performing Arts in Colorado Springs. And December 28th, we're at the Paramount in Denver, Colorado. That's it. That's to the end of the year. That is it. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.